Hey everyone, it's Jacob here with Waterwell FAQ. Today, talking to you about control boxes. So these are gonna be submersible well pump control panels or control boxes. And I wanna just do a, a quick video talking about the, the different types um, that are out there and what each one is used for. So without further ado, we're gonna dive right in. So the first box I have here on my right is a QD or quick disconnect control box. Um, these are going to be available in half horsepower, three quarter horsepower, and one horsepower uh, single phase 230 volt boxes. All these in front of me are going to be for single phase 230 volt uh, applications. Um, these are going to be cheaper, uh, more cost effective um, boxes, but they don't have some of the same features that your other ones do. And these are going to be um, in your small half horsepower and three quarter horsepower. Uh, all of this you're going to have available. This is pretty standard here. And so they're referred to as quick disconnect or QD boxes um, because of the way they're designed, the way the boxes are designed. They just push together like that, disconnect um, from the base. So the next one we're going to have is a standard box. This one here in front of me is a one, dual rated one horsepower and one and a half horsepower box. Um, it's a little different. It's going to be in a larger enclosure. Uh, it's going to have the addition of a run capacitor um, and it's also going to have these little overloads down here. Um, it's two different overloads. One's gonna be a start overload and one's gonna be a main overload. These are overload protection. So if they detect um, that the motor is pulling too many amps, they will trip. And as you can see on the bottom, there are reset buttons. Um, these buttons are by nature very spongy. So if you go to check one to see if it's tripped because your pump's not working, just make sure you press them really hard. Um, the next one I have is going to be a deluxe box. Just like the standard box, it looks almost identical, but this is a three horsepower, so you'll see the capacitors are a little bigger. Um, it's got the addition of a contactor. So this contactor allows us to wire up the pressure switch differently. If you watch my other video on pressure switches, you'll know I talked a lot about checking your control box to see if you have an SW terminal. This is what it looks like. This is where all your wiring would be. Uh, your power coming in for your breaker, L1, L2, yellow, black, and red would be your motor leads going out. This is that switch terminal I was talking about, the SW. Um, and as I touched on in the other video, this allows us to wire from L2 to the pressure switch and then back from the pressure switch to the SW. What that does is when the pressure switch closes to start your pump, uh, we're pulling power from L2, goes through the pressure switch, comes back to SW. SW is wired to this yellow wire here which is to our coil, it energizes our coil on our contactor, draws it in and starts the pump. And the pressure switch opens because you've built pressure, it kills power by opening, and then this coil de-energizes on the contactor and releases. So this one also has the overloads, same overloads here, um, same resettable. Um, and these are gonna be for your generally larger horsepowers, three horsepower and above, uh, most commonly three horsepower, five, seven and a half, 10 and even 15 in some applications. Um, your standard boxes are gonna be your one horse, uh, horse and a half, um, and two horsepower. And again, your QD boxes are gonna be your half horsepower, three quarter horsepower, and one horsepower. Um, so I get asked a lot, uh, especially like when there's overlap, like, like here, well, can I use this, this standard box, this one horsepower and horse and a half, dual rated box, on a pump that is one horsepower but had a QD box? Sure can no reason you can't in the world. Um, and I actually like these better anyway, because one, I get more room for wiring, um, and two, I've got overload protection. I don't have any additional protection here with these. Um, while these are significantly cheaper, um, you sacrifice protection by going, going the cheap route. I do think these have their place, especially in the smaller uh, horsepower, the fractional stuff, the one and a half, I'm sorry, the half horsepower and three quarter horsepower. But uh, if you have the option, for these larger boxes, even if it's just a standard, get the standard. Um, on talking the differences between the standard and the deluxe, you know, I mentioned my other video on pressure switches and how you wire them up differently. With the standard box, a, a caution that I like to point out with guys is when you're wiring these up, you're bringing single phase 240 volt power from your breaker directly to this box with the pressure switch being in the middle. So because the pressure switch is intercepting that power to start and stop this box based on your line pressure, the wiring from the pressure switch to this box has to be adequately sized to handle 
the full load current of your submersible motor because the motor current is flowing through that wire and through that switch. Whereas with this deluxe boxes, it allows us to use a much smaller wire. We don't have current flowing through it anymore because our wiring is coming from our breaker directly to L1, L2, no switch in the middle. Then we're adding a wire and going from L2 to our pressure switch and then coming back from our pressure switch to, to SW. Now, all that's doing is just providing uh, a voltage loop. Uh, so when the switch closes, like I said, it energizes the coil to start the pump. So because we're just having voltage flow through it, no current, uh, we can use a much smaller wire, makes running conduit easier, makes running wire a lot easier, and makes wiring to the terminals and the pressure switch much, much easier. Again, it's gonna be a little bit more expensive to go to a deluxe box if you have the option, um, but definitely worth it in my opinion. So um, again, those are gonna be your different types of boxes that you're commonly gonna run into. Um, and you should be able to now figure out the type of box you have, the type of boxes that you uh, can get, and which one is right for you. If you have any questions, uh, you know, feel free to reach out to us on our website at waterwellfaq.com. We have a contact us section. You can contact us in the comments section here on this video. Um, check out our other videos uh, here on YouTube. Um, if you find them informative um, and uh, got something out of it, then please like and subscribe. And also check out our blog on uh, waterwellfaq.com. Um, we're posting some good stuff there also with instructions, tips, tricks, um, diagnostic procedures, uh, tool recommendations, things like that. Um, all kinds of good stuff on the website. Uh, check us out there too if you have time. Thank you.